Much of the world is on a mission to move away from fossil fuels and towards using renewable sources of energy. Across northern Europe, tens of thousands of wind turbines have been installed at on- and offshore wind farms. From southern Europe to as far north as Germany, vast solar farms have been created on previously agricultural land. The UK has been at the forefront of these developments. In the third quarter of 2018, a third of electricity consumed in Britain was produced from renewable sources. This has been celebrated by environmental organisations, including many of the biggest wildlife conservation charities. They have made calls for increasingly ambitious green policies. The Royal Society for the Protection of Birds, the RSPB, says that renewable energy is essential to protect the world from climate change. The campaign to protect rural England has demanded an expansion of renewable energy. But as they lead our rush into a green energy future, these organisations do not seem to have given much thought to the impact of green energy on wildlife and nature. Wind and solar farms have now been around long enough for a clear picture of their environmental impacts to have emerged. Evidence from around the world shows that wind farms are killing birds. Large upland species seem particularly vulnerable, but many smaller and more common species are also threatened. The impact on bats may be even worse. When they examined their lungs, they found the blood vessels had burst, causing their lungs to fill up with blood and drown them. Rotating blades leave a drop in air pressure in their wake, so if bats get too close to them, their delicate lungs will expand and explode. Conservationists are worried that whole populations of bats could be wiped out. Insect species also seem to be at risk. One recent study suggested that each year a significant proportion of migratory insects are crushed by turbine blades. But it's not just collisions that are the problem. Conservationists have observed a barrier effect created by renewable energy installations. Wind turbines and solar panel arrays can prevent animals moving about to find food and shelter. And despite once being thought of as environmentally friendly, the production of biofuels requires the destruction of landscapes and habitats to make room for energy crops. In America, vast areas of forest are being felled so that wood pellets can be burnt in power stations in the UK. These consequences are not what most people would associate with green energy and saving the planet. The problem is that green energy is necessarily land intensive and this means that many natural landscapes are being dramatically transformed. Wind turbines require foundations with 80 tonnes of steel and 1400 tonnes of concrete. The construction of turbines requires heavy machinery which in turn requires access roads to be cut through undeveloped natural landscapes. These access roads can total 100 kilometres in length on a single wind farm. Then the turbines in the wind farm must be connected to the grid by power lines, requiring the further destruction of trees and habitats. This is why CPRE exists. To celebrate our countryside from our farms to our wild areas and the communities that help them to thrive. We want all of us to be able to enjoy our beautiful landscapes, no matter where you live. All of us here at CPRE would like to say a huge thank you for your incredible support over the past year. Together, we've promoted, enhanced and protected our beautiful countryside so it thrives and enriches all our lives. Organisations that have made public pledges to protect wildlife and nature have done little to prevent this destruction or to bring it to the attention of the public. Most campaigning organisations lobby for renewables while only occasionally making objections to developments at a local level. Well, the RSPB has objected to a very, very small proportion of all the wind farm proposals that have come forward. This seems to give permission for the destruction of bird populations as long as they are not rare species. A remarkable departure from the RSPB's campaigning messages. Conservation groups seem to be sweeping under the carpet the environmental impact of renewables to act as PR campaigns for green energy developers. But how much longer can this last? One of the proudest achievements of our country is our position as a world leader in tackling this global emergency. Being the first country to introduce legally binding carbon reduction targets and cutting emissions further than all the other G20 countries. But as we all know, we now must go further. This report now sets us on a path 
to become the first major economy in the world to legislate to end our contribution to global warming entirely. Plans to reduce the UK's net carbon emissions to zero will involve an expansion of renewable energy that dwarfs what we have seen so far. As the amount of land required to meet these policy goals increases, conservationists who depend on public sympathy and financial support for their stated causes will have to justify the policies they have actively supported. Organisations like the Royal Society for the Protection of Birds will have to explain their support for the destruction of habitats and bird populations. Conservation organisations will have to explain why they have used money donated to them not to protect but instead to campaign for the destruction of wildlife, nature and landscapes. To find out more, download the report from the GWPF website.